Hi, the aim today is to swap out the hard disk on this Pavilion 23. So I have a towel down here so it doesn't scratch it on the hard surface of my desk because it's literally screen straight down onto the desk. Wouldn't really be ideal to be moving that around with any of the dirt that might be on the desk or on the screen um, that could scratch it. So the specific model number, 23-P030NA, with a product number of J2H24EA, and then a hash or a pound sign ABU. So there's not a lot to go on on this. We have two visible screws, and that is it. I will take out any USB uh, dongle that might still be left plugged in because I expect when you lift this that will uh, cause a problem if it's still plugged into the motherboard. So there's only two visible screws which are these bottom left corner screws and right corner screws. It looks like when you undo them it forces the plastic casing up away from the main body of the computer. And that helps you start taking the cover off. I think those are fully undone. My next step is to get the spudger or the very thin but flexible knife. Uh, this is an RGM branded 103 uh, which I bought from Amazon many years ago and they do still sell them at least in the UK. So you can see where I've undone the screw here it's started to... Uh, let me see if I can focus that might be too close. Uh, it started to push the casing away from the rest of the body of the machine. And if I hadn't undone the USB here, these are no longer aligned. So if this was still plugged in, it would have been holding the case or uh, at least bending the USB away from the motherboard. So definitely not something you want to do. Let's double check that the other side is as uh, unclipped as I can get it. Let's put it back down. I probably do need to unclip all of this part of it though. That was an interesting way of doing it. It looked like I kind of got the spudger down, wedged in, then I just kind of flexed the case, almost by mistake while moving this uh, stand, and uh, the whole thing unclipped and popped out. So now, make sure that, again, fully unscrewed there, because screws seem to have a good job of, or do a good job of, when you put it back down, without even moving the screw, they somehow kind of bite in. So I've just lifted that side up and unscrewed that, and it's now fully free and is moving. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same with the other side. There we go. So this entire case is now hinging up and off. There we go. And we have the inside of the machine. Hard disk incredibly easily accessible there. Motherboard will be under here. Probably the touch or screen power. I expect that's probably the touch controller. It does have something stuck on it. Looks like a bit of tape or something. Get rid of that. 
the uh, cooling stuff will be here going to the fan and then the heat sink the problem I've got with this machine is when it's on it corrupts data so you load it up it will start making clicking noises and then Windows won't load or it'll crash the logon process or all the fonts will be all wonky uh, a hard disk tester so HDD regenerator and crystal disk info don't report any disk errors and um, memtest86 doesn't report any memory errors so in some ways I suspect that it might be either the cable or just the hard disk controller on the motherboard but today what I plan to do is to swap out the hard disk with an SSD anyway just to make the whole machine quicker and uh, I'll monitor to see if the problem continues when the SSD is in there. So now we're into the machine I want to remove the hard disk which is also an unusual size so you can't use a small screwdriver you need to use a fairly big tipped screwdriver that one's a retained screw so it doesn't fully come out it'll just un unscrew and then become springy these two remain screwed in because the whole thing's on a bracket and gently pull uh, if you didn't do it gently you'd end up slamming the drive over into this end stop here potentially causing damage if you did it a bit too forcefully and there we have the one terabyte original hard disk and the plan here is to swap it out and then later today when some SSDs arrive put the SSDs in So that's four retaining screws for the hard disk undone and then you can just slide the hard disk out for safekeeping until later I'll just put that back where it was put these screws on the hard disk that they came from and I'm wondering if for a treat I will undo this motherboard cover just to see what's underneath here and how easy it is to get to the RAM and other items within the machine. It also looks like the code name for this motherboard or this machine is Lavender. So it's got a little milled in, I think, bit of or stamped in text that says Lavender and then clear CMOS password and the pins and the jumpers that you need to set. So there's two screws undone here. This whole thing seems to be hinging upwards. And there we are. We have one free RAM slot and one stick of RAM of uh, eight gigabytes. So you can actually put 16 in here and add to it. The CPU is also a socket so it would be fairly easy to swap it out for another compatible CPU. The Wi-Fi card is modular as are pretty much all of them so if your Wi-Fi card went wrong or you wanted to upgrade it that would be very easy to update as well. BIOS battery and that's about all that's probably user serviceable really. Uh, because of the weird fault with this as well even though I didn't find any memory errors I will clean and then put back the 
memory in a different slot just in case it's uh, some kind of weird memory problem that the uh, Memtest 86 didn't pick up. Once again, on one of these screws, some very strange tape, possibly even paint, but I don't see that that's, uh, it's definitely tape, not paint. I can't see how it would have got onto that screw, unless it was in manufacturing, because there's no tape anywhere else other than the bit that had ended up over on the touch controller. Very strange. Thanks for watching, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thanks.